Greetings and welcome to NIMBY. It's a railway simulator. So, the, the goal of this game is to build a railway network. Now, you can either go for a local Express network around your own town, you can go for a global network across the whole planet, minutes. and there's no limitation. The only in thing Canada is Express you've got money to worry about. Well, you could say, set up a little railway minutes. up in Los Angeles, another bit up in Florida, a little bit up in London, another one up in Japan, and you can just that around you don't have to be in one place or you can build a network and i think what we're going to do is we're going to start a little run here and if we go into the uk and we zoom in a little bit so we can see some of the places i say what we do is we start at peterborough for obvious naming reasons and then we run north and we try and make a link all the way up to leeds that's the goal just initially and then if we decide to do more we can do more if we decide to yeah we can send the route for example we can go Peterborough, Stamford to Leicester, and um, jump across some big cities on the way up, which will take us a while. Or we can do short hops, so we can go Peterborough, Mackie, Bourne, Bond, Grantham, uh, Newark, uh, Mansfield, Work Worsup, Work yes, uh, Doncaster, <clears throat> and to jump the smaller routes up, or we can take the big towns up and cities up. That's how we can work out. But I think we, we start off at Peterborough. It's a it's a moderately sized city, and uh, people town, people city. I honestly don't know. I've only been through it a few hundred times, so. Um, but yeah, I think we started. Now the way this game works is it uses the road maps, and I believe it's open street map that it's using, to get all the roads down and accurate. But all of the railways have been removed. You can see here this line coming through. It's like a weirdly clear area. This will be where the actual railway will be. Now, I don't know people that well, so I can't tell, but the road area looks so clean, it looks unusual. Uh, and especially with roads coming to it, that, that looks like a footbridge going over a railway track to me. <clears throat> so, all they've done in this game is they've taken the open street map and they've removed the railway bridge, the railway itself. So, you have full control of where you want the railway to go. So, you can either build your own railway going. I can do better than the people in my area did when they built it in the 19 or whatever. Or you can go, hey, I want to recreate it exactly. So you can either improve upon the existing designs or you can make your own. Now, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to just try and get this thing done. And aesthetics will be, for the most part, irrelevant because we're not, we don't care about knocking down a few houses as we build a train station or anything like that. Okay, so that's the, the goal anyway. We're starting Peterborough. We head out north direction, one of these two up. And we want to have... A town network, a town network, and then we bridge them. So here, if we go Corby, so let's say we go Peterborough to Corby, we'll build a Corby network, we'll build a Peterborough network, and then we'll run a train line between them. If we do Stamford, it'll be the same thing, build a network up in both areas, and then, then link them together. So we'll build separate areas, and then we'll link them. Okay, so let's get started in Peterborough now. We do have this, what looks like the railway line, the old railway line here. Now, that does suggest that if we were to build something in the centre here, we could build a central station. And have all the other stations sort of come in to us. Or we can build a, a, a spiral network and have the main train station on the spiral. I love the fact that this is a Peterborough Minor in Illness and Injury Unit. Fancy name for a small hospital. <laughs> Not a, or a clinic at least. Alright, so. Which way are we, we, we going to go first? I don't know if we're going to go to Corby or Stamford. Stamford's actually quite small. Uh, we'll probably get that done in like two or three stations. So it's probably best to go for Corby, which is that bit bigger. What the hell is that? The motor speedway. Okay. Just weirdly on the map. You know, it does seem we're going downwards when we go to Corby, but we are heading towards Leicester. And that would make a bigger run up to up to uh, Nottingham. That makes sense. Okay, let's get started in people. So here's how we play the game. I have the time pause currently, but no reason other than we can, so let's unpause the that and get that running. Uh, it does run at real time and you can increase time, as you can see, quite dramatically. Uh, so, we're going to start over here. <clears throat> I'm going to keep pause for a moment because it does get have a really annoying thing when you start putting down the the, uh, the lines, where as soon as you put a line down, not a track, a line, um, passengers wait at the stations and they start complaining that the, the service is late and then they start wanting refunds. And that's fine, except you haven't even started a train on the line yet. <laughs> so, we'll have it paused for a moment. We have no income coming in, so there's no reason to run the system until we get income coming in. So the way it works, you build your tracks, you put lines on the tracks, and then you put trains on the lines. So we will start with tracks. And you've got the appender track, build a branch, build a station, and build a depot. We will be going for a station. Right, now, the thing is, when you start these things, 
you have a choice between do you want a ground station or a tram station and they change the speed of the track and where they can go now i would say given the cost of the trains are ridiculously high and trams are much cheaper you want to have trams running around your area bringing in uh bringing passengers to your central train station that's what i would suggest so if we're going to be heading over to corby we're going to want our train station to be somewhere around here i would say so we can just shoot off of there and go straight across now the thing with this game is it does have a blockage on the roads if i try to build a train track across a road it's perfectly fine to build a, uh, a bridge but it won't go across the river the lakes and stuff like that those need attention however if i try to build a tram line uh, if i try to build an actual ground railway instead it will start complaining about more stuff you see how well, the road doesn't like no can't go across that because a railway can't go across a road that at that angle you can go across here if we give it a, a bridging option but once it gets to a certain point it can't go across then we have to move to a viaducts or tunnels or something else and you have to adjust your plan so we have ways we have things we have to work around but yeah i think if we build our main train station to head out to corby we can build it uh, here and it could need to shoot off that way and off to uh, off to corby and that is a pretty good idea so we'll start that, and I will start it as a ground-based train station, and then we'll build a whole um, tram network around it that feeds it. Now the question is, do we start it on the bottom here, on the south side, so that we can continue on this way? Is there anything over here to continue to? There's not really anything over here. I mean, Norwich is over there, but it's so far away it's not worth the run for a train. We'd be better off doing that as a later thing if we go the far. I think we, uh, into the south, Huntington, Cambridge is down there. Okay, we can build the train station somewhere around here, and then we have them send the uh, any visits we do have out. Now, for that being done, we'll just leave the uh, the train station out for now uh, and go straight into a, uh, a tram station. So let's get let's get Peterborough started. Now, we don't want it to be one massive network of the whole thing in one go. We want to build this up in a small little group of trains running. Now, we want to start at the top of this network here. We have Gilton up here, and it will give us that. Bullet. So when you try and build a station. You click and then you draw how big your station to be. So for this, the the when my cursor says it's uh, 435 five meters, minutes. you take that down to a size you want it at. Probably the around 200 to 250 would do the job normally. Probably 100 would probably do it minutes. most parts. Uh, but it then tells you in the little number just there how many passengers you have with the capability. And that circle is the catchment area for it. Now that station would have 486 people in it. Now if we were to do it over here, the same area, we've got 2,000. So it's definitely worth looking at density. And this button over here, population density, shows you where it's worth building anything. So we're going to be... Turn it off for a moment. I think we start at the station up here, and we come down, and run down. Now, do we, do we do a spur network, or do we do a loop network? That's the big question here. Spur or loop? And look at how deep that is. We could probably get away with a spur down to about there. And then he would have to come up. So I say we have one spur station at the end of the network. Have it come down this way, go out around. We don't want to, again. We don't want this to go way too far. We don't want to go around the whole of the uh, people system. We want to loop these around to small areas. So we can probably come down there. Bring our train station down here. Um, Does I have too much? I has got a fair bit of people in here. Uh, I has nine hundred people. Okay. So we can send a, a small network down. Maybe come down. Shoot out to I, <coughs> um, cut across New England, back up, because this is a big, busy area, right? Yeah, 2009. So that could be a nice small area there. We could have, ooh, we can even do the North Peterborough to South Peterborough, and then have a Central Peterborough system in place. Ooh, do we do that? Do we do that? Do we do North, Central, and South, or do we do just a North South? I think that we use the river as a North South divide over, over the uh, over the town. Just do all of that in one big loop. And then all this in one big loop and we'll see how it goes that could work let's see how big it works out it may be too big we'll find out okay so we'll start with the station here and uh, i don't know what this is this is nothing too, too big to worry about uh, this goes all the area this does okay so i want to bring this down i want to be as straight as we can and i want this to be around we'll say 200 meters should be a good average for stations right and there's our first station in place now the way the game does it is it finds a local landmark it names the station after those landmarks. Now we can change the name of those stations if we don't like them, but uh, for now we have no real reason to change them. But that's the first station. Now we want this station to come off, come this way, and we want to 
come across potentially to iron. Maybe we skip iron entirely. I don't know yet. But we've been stuff this way. I think we have to skip it actually. We come around. It's only a thousand people, and we got a lot more down here to deal with. And we should keep the loop as smooth as possible. So, if we put it here, we can see how we get that. And if we do this way, you can see how the two bubbles start to interact with each other. So we want the bubbles to interact a little bit, but not too much. So probably a station around here somewhere. We want 200 meters on it, and we want a bit just a tad further north. 200 meters is our target on our stations. About there. Boom. We've got Gunthorpe Station. So we've got that and that, and we can see that you can, that one's actually not allowed to be built because of the intersection, probably with that river actually. Um, yes, it's, it's stopping from building it. So, pull it back there, end it out this way to 200 meters. And we don't care too much about the, yeah, okay, about that um, road. But I, that means I want that that way. So, I want it more this way so that we can deal with that uh, extra capacity that I don't want to lose. Uh, this square here because it's, it it's, it's a deeper purple, so I think it's uh, it's it's important to have that one. If we did that, so that means you down here. You're gonna have to the train lane's gonna have to swing out and down, but that's because of this this uh, river. Which we, we okay, it's fair enough. We'd have to deal with that. Um, maybe bring it a bit more this way though, just to uh, <clears throat> make the line coming in easier. Okay, that would work, and then we want to bring it down. It's gonna come down here. And we can build it over here, over this. Can we build over? Oop, can I build it over the? Uh, over this? I can. Okay. I wasn't sure if it would let me do it or not. Uh, okay. So we want to go 200 meters. Is our average target? I want this bit up here as well, don't we? Okay. Cancel that. Bring it up here. Oops. Uh, delete. Ah, delete. Uh, it's the M button for move. Delete. Delete. And then stations, uh, T for station, because obviously T for station. Um, I want to make sure come across, it's going to come to here. We're going to make sure this overlaps a bit, but not too much. That overlapping about there should do it. That's 271 meters. I'm moving it more to the south. And use the move tool just to move that piece of the station around a little bit. So we get to where we want it to be. Uh, I think we should be aiming for about there. And then bring that down to 200 meters ish there and then that will allow us to come down we have this we have this coming down and i'm trying to if we go down all the way down and across the problem then becomes we have this gap in the middle so we're gonna have to be careful with that i don't want the station to be too big either so what we could do is we could cut this one across here now bring this across back up it'll be a five six maybe seven station run and then we can have a central run down here and that probably would work out better in the long run for managing so in that case i'm going to turn that this way because if we turn it downwards we can bring the trains in a bit uh, a bit better for the for the for the exits bring that up to there 200 meters there we go all right so then go from there down to see so if we do that an inner loop wouldn't come across here, so actually, you would be better going off that way. 200 meters that way. And then we come out here and we do another one over near Dog's Fort. Oops, uh, T for stations. The one over here for Dog's Fort, put that about there. Oop, T for station. About there. Uh, and we don't get this here, this is interesting. But the thing is, because the gap there, that's 900 people. But if I did it over here, it's 1,000, so I think it's actually worth missing a small gap on them, maybe. So what I'm going to do here is send it on a downward trajectory. There. And then we'll say maybe we pull... This is actually quite high density. This actually area is worth missing out, I think, because it's got a, a very low density area. I mean, it's only 500 people and that's if we steal from both of these two stations. I think it's worth doing, but we can probably pull this one across here a bit more. I want to grab that a bit up there, you see. Bring that to there. I want it to be around 200 meters. There we go. Bring it across as much as we can, keeping those purples in the line. There we go. 203 is still about 200, which is our kind of our goal. That brings us to there, and then we this one will shoot across and up to there. Is the, is kind of the plan. So what we we'll do is that one there. We'll say if we bring that one down. 
200 meters. There's a river there, so we can't go direct. So we'll just take that across there. See, the, the rails themselves can go across the rivers, but the uh, but the stations themselves can't. That's what the problem there is. So that line there is going to go back up there and connect to that. So it's going to be this will be like an end point, and this will be a loop around. That's kind of the plan. Right, back to stations, and um, this this area, they are definitely need to get that in. So that comes down here. Put that to here, 200 meters. Look at that, 2,000 people. Nice. So that comes down to there. And then here we should be looking at cutting across. This area is going to get missed out, isn't it? That's the problem. Uh, I don't want to miss out the middle piece. That's the thing. But I don't want to make sure we have a loop. Maybe we have to just have shunts running down and back up again. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to. But if we did shunts, we'd have to have a third shunt in the middle. Don't know. Uh, but we're going to build another station over here. 200 meters is our target. But we could, that's that is where the middle line would come in. The middle loop would come across here. Yeah, so that's going to be the middle loop. This will be the northern loop. So I don't think that's wise. I mean, that one there, we can bring that across this way. Do that. So it's got a bit of a turn to it. And then we can come across here. And the goal then here would be plot some routes. So if we were to then say, hey, can you come up here? Ooh, move that to come across. And then move you so you go out more. So you come out and then round it into there. That could do us nice. Pull that back a bit. There we go. And then new station comes over here and it will take the, the passages from that. And it will run across here, going down this way. Move to. Make sure we don't lose too much of the station. We don't want too much of a gap over here. We're going to build this station right across the uh, big roundabout <laughs> uh, to there, 200 meters. And then the next station would be somewhere over here, New England. That'll link up to this station over here. Or do we, actually, we could probably abandon that station for now and make that part of the, the south loop. When Yeah, that would make more sense. That station, new station could go away. You two stations are going to link to each other. So you turn across here. You can turn that way, and we can actually make you make more sense now by turning you across the bottom of that. And that'll then you can go that way. And that go gives us a bit of a, a bit of a loop. Perfect, actually. Let's get the tracks in place. Uh, new tracks. Okay, you. And this is how you do the tracks. So the tracks themselves are speed limited. That's forty-five uh, kilometers an hour, right there. And if we build this uh, really tight, it goes down. But it's really hard to do it in the drop-on trams because it's really slow. Train tracks on the run, they're more susceptible to uh, to these sort of issues. Right, but we're taking that track out that way. And go straight there. And we have to be careful on the turns. We don't want to uh, make the turns too much. Now, here's the problem. The tram lines can't go across a river. What you can do on the round is we can switch it to a ground station. And that would allow us to jump the river. But it's more expensive to do uh, like that. And so we just need to pop those down. And you see we've got the two bridges where we switch to a railway network temporarily. And then back to tram. Are you on tram yet? Yeah, tram. So you, you've got to be, just got to be basically aware of what terrain you're dealing with. And then change it. And it comes down to here. That wants to do that, but that's got too much of a bulge out. I'm going to bring it to here, and then there we go. That's our train line, train track coming down. Tram track, sorry. Then the gun fort one needs to come into this. Now, this one's got to swing out in order to come around. So we're going to bring that across here. And then bring it around, bring it across to here. So we want to do that. And oh, actually, that snapped really nicely. Um, and because it's a tram track, we can get away with all sorts of uh, weirdness. Uh, train tracks, like I say, they, they have more restrictions on what you can and can't get away with, but that's mostly down to keeping the speeds uh, that bit higher. Alright, bring you across here. Now you're going to have to have a fairly decent turn. That's a bit too much, but that could be because I sent that too far back. Do that. There, we need to get the projection line in roughly the right place. Now, so you're doing it still. You're doing it still. Put that there. Put that there. There. Alright, use the move tool just to correct this a little bit, I think. Move that out, move that one down. So a little bit of a curve to these tracks. There we go. 
Okay, and then this side, you're going to go across and you're going up to there. Okay, so bring you up here. I'm going to have you do a turn and come up here like this. We aim you for that spot if we can. If I do that, it's going to give me a nice straight run in. Perfect. And then you, you're the final one, you're going to come up here. So for you, we've got a river to follow. So we need to switch this over to number two for the ground. This will allow us to build a bridge. Then back to number three, which is tram line. It just, and you see there, the difference is 288 kilometers an hour versus 45. But we don't, these are moving trams, and trams are uh, much slower. I'm going to pop that there, and then I'm going to switch over to branches. Now, branches, they pull off of another line. All I want to do is I want this to branch off about there, at that angle. Bring the angle about right there. There should do fine. Then bring the tram line down, and then boop, there we go. So we have this nice loop going around now. So it goes down, it comes around here, and we could probably straighten these out if we wanted to. Um, but because we're keeping the loop fairly small, we're not going to bother with that. Now, to build that, that will cost me 15 million to build that track line. So, build it. Boop. And do you want to build it? Yes, I do. There we go. All right. Now, the uh, the whole thing has been built. And um, we could rename these stations, like I said earlier, if we wanted to. Let's just switch back to selection mode. There we go. We could we could rename these stations if we wanted to, but in this particular area, there's not really a reason to. And if we go to tracks, we can see the coverage. And we've got a pretty decent coverage of the north of Peterborough. <clears throat> we do need a mid Peterborough uh, loop and we do need a south Peterborough loop so let's get the loop in place shall we first of all lines and then the bottom corner here new line and then we have to give it a name so we're going to call this uh is it just Peterborough North or North Peterborough what do you think uh we should, go, we should go Peterborough North so that all the Peterborough stations will be together yes Peter B O R O U G H N uh, north. Peterborough North, if I haven't even spelled that correctly, because I really love they have. And the code for the line will be Peter N. There we go. Now, here we set your prices. How much will it cost to be on this line? Now, we don't know how long the line is yet. That's going to take a second to work out. So, before we calculate the price, we have to look at this piece here. Add stops line and add waypoints. The waypoints are points on the track you can stop that aren't stations. Whereas uh, stops are actual stations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have this in a... <coughs> we could do two things. We can have a loop going around and then another loop going the other way. But we'd need, say, three trains each way. Or we can send one train to go all the way around the loop. So from A to B, do, 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 do. And then back around the loop. And so we only can do it all in one loop. And I think that's a better way of doing it. Just to figure out which side of the track is which. So we start them on B side. Which I think is the best side to start them on. And then we run them down to the... We should maybe not do that. Can we cancel that? Yeah, we should start on the A side. Start on the A. Then to A. Then to the A track. Keep on the A platform if we can. Which is the outbound route. And then to A. You see the red line is where it wants the uh, train to travel. Then it comes up here. And it'll come back up to this station. And we say go to the B platform now. And not, normally that would be the end of the route and it would, we didn't even need to do the last stop in. But we want to say actually return on the same track in the reverse order. That way we have one train actually doing both runs, not the clockwise and the counterclockwise runs around this uh, town. So a train goes one way and then goes back the other way. Now you wouldn't normally need to do that. Um, and when it gets to the end of the loop, uh, to Gunfort B, which is this one over here, um, it will then default back to its end station, which is uh, the William Law Church of England Aided Primary School, which is a weird name for a school. Uh, but there we go. And that would be the loop itself. So go one way and then come back and go the other way. Now, if we go into here and we say, well, we know the trains will average out at 45, because that's how the faster tracks were when we were looking at them earlier. And this is why it's paused by that, by the way, because right now, these lines are the passengers going, I can't get a train and I'm going to complain and get a refund and then compensation for being late and all sorts of other weird and stupid stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> if we know the trams are going to be 45 kilometers an hour, but we also know they're going to stop at stations and do so. So we'll slow it down to 40 to average that out a little bit so we compensate for them. We estimate the travel time. 
It says here, 33 kilometers is the journey, and it'll be 51 minutes loop around. It's not too bad. <clears throat> so what we want to do then is we want two things. One, we're going to price that somebody will pay to travel on this line. Now we can give them a base price where they get on and you pay a flat fee and you can travel anywhere on the network. Um, or we can give a price per kilometer, so the further you travel, the more you pay. I feel we go down the, the price per kilometer. Now, it's 33 kilometers from beginning to end and back again. So that's actually double the, the total length. No one's going to travel from stop, stop one to stop seven to do that. But actually, technically, it's round and back in. So that's actually half that distance in reality. But we, we're going to keep that running that way. So, we, if we say two per kilometre, that should be a good starting line. And we can, from that, we can work out if it's too expensive or too cheap. And we'll work that out as we go. And I think we'll leave off the basic price. Just pay per kilometre for this one. And we'll work it out as we go. <clears throat> now, we have that much distance. How long are we wanting people to wait between stops? 50 minutes is okay um, as a journey, as a full journey length with all 12 stops. So, if we're going to say to them, I want you to wait no more than 20 minutes, we'd have to put in so many trains, probably three or four trains. So if we said it's... 51 minutes and uh, we want to put three trains in there, that's 17 minute wait. Probably would want probably four trains there, we probably want to get that weight down, but we'll start with 17 and see if we get people complaining. So, to do that, uh, we go to trains, and we go, we need a tram, because we don't, what we don't want to do is spend some money on, say, the uh, the the high vit vitas, that does 320 kilometers an hour, and will cost 34 million when we've got a limit of 45 kilometers. So what we do is we'll look for trams. You are on 60, you are 70, and I think all of these are trains. We don't really have much on the tram line, which is a bit of a shame. That's, well, that's 90 kmh. It's like 70 million though. And that's on 60 at 8 million. But the city tram comes in at 8 million for 215 passengers at 70 kmh. And the Turbo Star is 8 million for 225. So the tram's actually better because you can actually add more carriages. <clears throat> um, we will do these at... I wonder if we put the more money on them, but I think it's actually better to have a high capacity on these, especially the city ones. Um, should we go for the, the whole three? We really should go for high capacity. 11 million though. It's a lot of money. Let's go Z Force 215. Trying to think, is that the best option to go 215 right now? Um, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's go big. We got loads of money. Let's go big now. Uh, I'm gonna want three trains. Actually, no, these lines are quite small. Do it. Yeah, do default 215 people. Catabolic three trains, 25 to million total. Purchase all three trains. Five minutes. And then what you have to do is really weird. Click on the train. Express click on the schedule. For leads in five click on the line minutes. and pick the line you want on Peter North. Next train. Click on the schedule, Peter Burnoff. Next train, schedule, Peter Burnoff. Now you can have them do different schedules, some on, some off. I haven't really found a reason for that. They do appear to be uh, very, very nicely uh, placed out, so I don't, wouldn't worry about it. Now, there's the next thing. Those are done. Go back to lines, and we've got three trains, and we want them to space out nicely. So I'm going to say, I want each stop. So we go down to this one here and set, set min interval. Each stop, I want it to be 17 minutes apart. We can probably actually lower that to, say, 16 minutes apart. Boom, there we go. Every stop is 16 minutes apart. So when the trains move, they will move to a stop, and if another train's been there within 16 minutes, they will wait until the 16-minute mark. That's how you space the trains out. So if we run this at normal speed for a moment, we should start seeing the trains coming out of the stations. There's the train number one. If we just speed it up a little bit, there's train number two. Train number one leaving, train number two moves into the station, and that's a 15 minute wait. That 15 minute wait <clears throat> allows that train to get some route down the line. So let's speed it up, send it out, and then off they go. And then next one goes in a moment, let's catch the timers, it's faster. Off it goes, and now the next one's got its timer going, and they will be going around this loop. Now, when that timer runs out, there we go, they can move. 
and they should now start spacing out properly. Now there will be a slight moment while they sort of bottle up, they've got this one here. This is caused because two trains in the station at the same time. Now we can solve that with a nice little correction here and say any time you go to the William Law Church of England station, which is that one, we have a zero minute wait there. That way you don't clog that station up. And the same goes here when you have the halfway mark. There we go. And that just means that they won't clog that station up because they're going in and out of the same station. They can clog each other up. Now if we allow this to run, these three trains should get into a synchronous point where they're not waiting on each other. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Key one's this one coming down because the other one had a wait here. Do this have a wait there? Minimal, a few, a few seconds, and that's just enough time for them to pick the new passengers up. So I think that's working okay. Now, to find if it's actually working okay, we go over to our budget tab on the little right hand side here and go to accounting. And we take a look at what we've got here. So far, and it is only 4 a.m., and we've been running since before midnight, we've made $2,445. The game runs in dollars. No matter what, no matter where you build, it runs in dollars. Uh, so far, it's cost us hmm, less than a hundred in actual running costs and uh, maintenance and stuff. So we're actually making a profit already, uh, and I think that means it's running fine. We have obviously we've got a billion pound, a billion dollar loan, and we've got we spent fifteen million in construction plus twenty five million in trains. We spent a bit of money, but it does appear we are making some money now. If you look at the passengers, if we click on a train, oop, I have to go to that one. If I click on a train. I can see the passengers here, and this person is okay, and this person is very, very happy. Now they're happy because they haven't spent any money yet, but then, but when they do spend money, we keep an eye on what they, what they're like. And uh, as long as they're green, we're good. Now, if they're too happy, like this person's unhappy, but if they're too happy, then we're not charging them enough. But if they're very unhappy, then we charge them too much. And we have to balance the the customer satisfaction between them all. Now, what we want to do is keep we want people to be. Not super happy that we're prices are so cheap, but not also so bad that we get start getting refunds over here for for uh, the train being too expensive or the train being too late. So if we go to like Gunfop here, and we can see people waiting at the station, uh, and people being people mail people waiting at the station. It's four a.m. and people are waiting at the station. That is impressive, and we can see these numbers on below the stations here. Um, the twenty-three there says that it is uh, 23 people currently waiting at the station and the 1682 says that's the current population in the area and they'll, they'll face see if they're happy or not so here we've got 10 passengers all waiting to go to these different places okay so that line's working it does appear that we are not making any refunds and we are making some money so now we're making money we should start looking at the next line then just to get some actual flow and progress on running um <clears throat> so let's get the middle station up and running and then the south can just be a loop that sort of comes along and they want to sort of connect up one station uh, each one so we want to we'll probably have the, uh, the south line connect to this station at uh, Fullbridge Academy then have a drop off down here at Peterborough Central and then have the other the south line come and connect to the station here so they they work by touching each other in, in non inappropriate ways all right, so let's do that. Let's start up here. So what we can do, we could have them share the, the station, <coughs> which is perfectly fine and legitimate. But so we can also build stations up alongside each other if we thought the capacity might be an issue. Now, the problem with them sharing a station is if a train comes in and stops and waits, and then another train comes in, it has to stop behind it and wait, and that causes a bit of a bottleneck in the network. Now, I don't think there will be a problem here when we have three trains, but we might need more than three. And I feel that, just more to show the point, we should definitely look at having uh, a separate station here. So what we do is we go to create a new station, and you click somewhere around there, and you bring it up, and you run them parallel with each other, like this. it will be around 200 metres-ish. Boom, there we go. And we can we can use Manoeuvre Tool to uh, straighten them up and play them around, and they will overlap quite happily as we look across the tracks. Anyway, put them like that so they run parallel. And these are now two parallel stations, but they, they operate under the same name. They are one station with two tracks now. Now, if we go back to there, we want to run that station over to run this loop down here. So let's go this way first. So give me stations. The first station that, that's going to go to is going to be over here down to South Breton. And it's going to go there. We want it to be 200 meters. Boop. Then it gets down to Longport, 
he's going to do a turn here. So we'll do a turn there. 209 meters, perfect. And that gives us a, this station is a bit squeezed, but I feel it's worth the doing to get that area. Then we cut across here. Now we have to choose what we want to grab because this bottom part is quite low population, but this part here is quite high. So I say we want to be tagging somewhere around here and grabbing as much of this area as we can. Now we have to we'll rearrange the tracks at the minute so they don't go stupid, but we also want to make sure this peaker section here gets much of this as possible. This is a very popular area for us and we're probably gonna have the station from down here as well. So the Peter main station, probably run that across here ourselves, so we want this one to be 200 meters long, running as flat as possible, so that we can bring it with it's the post office station, cool. <laughs> Now, this station is going to come up here to there and then back across to here. So we can bring this station here, maybe 200 meters. Yeah, I think it's quite nicely. It's not as big as the others we've had around before. Uh, within this one up to here, uh, 200 meters to go that way. We should maybe push it that way a bit more. A bit more that way. Let's move that one down to 200 meters. There we go. Bring it down a bit to make life easier for everybody. There. And then finally, the final station is actually going to be in the middle here, and it's going to cut up to there. Now, this is going to make a bit more of a weird route, I think. But I think it's worth doing here. So that there, bring that into there. 200 meters should cover most of that. And it can be a longer station if you wanted to, but I think that covers it all. Now, it's going to be a bit more wiggly than the north line, which says a lot considering this. But we can also adjust stations as we go. So if it's go to the new tracks and bring you down, we want you to connect to there. And that actually has a nice curve almost all the way down to that station as well. There we go. That actually goes in there nicely. Now you, you have a problem because you need to get this long box. So we need to swing you out and back in again. And it's not undoable. And we could we get around it, but I don't really want to get around it because I want you to be coming out this way to make life easier to get up there. So we're going to do this as a bit easier turn though. We'll make it a sharpish turn here. There. Send you up this way. And that should connect you into there nicely. Good. Then West Town can come down to... Now West Town's going to come down to the centre here. Down to the post office station. There we go. Post office station then shoots off this way. Comes off really nicely actually. Into there. And then you come up to Newark station there and then Newark station Newark station sort of like the weeds it's sort of dip down to get to where it's going next uh, to there and that will link to there and then finally the Saint the All Saints Church of England Primary School why are all the schools getting names on this thing has to come up here now this one's going to be a bit more difficult it's going to go north then we want to link it to there like that so it goes a bit more north in order to get up there. But this one's a bit more wiggly, but it's designed to capture the biggest area. Now we need to set up a line. Now remember I said before, when you put a line on, they immediately go all crazy and start complaining about stuff. Now I'll show you how that works by actually doing a line while, we're, while the game is running. Also, 19.9 19 million, 19 .9 million, we're still to build the track. That's just planning there. So build, yes, build, done. Now if we go to lines, here are our lines, and we do the same thing as we did before. Trains go around one way, then they can go around the other way. Because I think that's just the easy way to manage. When you've got hundreds of lines later on, it's easy to have 100 lines and you have 200 lines to cover in the same area. So we'll start at A. Hang on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We'll start at A. And we'll move down to A again. I need to choose the outbound direction when I get to a, state, a platform. So we can choose the arrow. I personally choose the arrow facing the other direction. I don't know if it makes a difference. That's just the way I do it. Then you get to here, then we turn around at B, boop, and then boop, and then boop. And then what we'll do is we'll change the colour of the line, because I don't think having two red lines will make that all that good for visualising what's happening here. And that should drop us off back to the original. Perfect. And then we'll make you, because you're the central line, make you a blue. I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm an idiot. I, I didn't add a new line. I extended the existing line because I didn't want to pay attention. Alright, we can't do that because you can't change tracks. So, we're going to undo this now because I am an idiot. 
do 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 Keep pressing the delete button. Do 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 do. There we go. Oh, twelve stops. Yeah, same as before. Nothing changed. Right. So what we should have done is because I should have done to that is I should press down here a new line. I should have put a new line in place. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. And then we can toggle that to have it. So we'll start the timer again, running as we were before, and we'll run this new line from A to A to A to A. A. And see, it's got a different colour now as well. See, look, different colour. You can see the difference in them. Damn it. Oh, then we run that one from B track in the other direction. And we're almost done. There we go. Alright, that's the yellow track. Now, this one we're going to call. Yeah. I missed something out with him. I missed an O. B O. Yeah. Peterborough Cent Central Peterborough Central code Peter C. There we go. Turn the tablet off and then we have Peter North, Peter Central. Now, if I stop it for a second, just to show you what I mean, I've paused it. You can see here there's passengers and now they're not that happy. Even though it's a free line for them, they're not, they're not supposed to pay anything. They're not happy because they've been waiting. That's why I pause it at this point, just so I can do this without getting all complaining at me. Now, I also don't want it to be yellow, so I'm going to actually choose a blue for the center line. And we'll go for a paley blue. There we go. So we've got the red line for the north, we've got the blue line for the center, and we'll go for like a green line for the south, and then we'll use that kind of color scheme around the place. Okay. This station, uh, estimate travel time 40 kmh average, has an hour and 21 uh, travel time. So, we want to take the hour and 21 and break it down. If we said hour and 21 is 80 minutes, roughly, and um, we said divided by five trains, that's 16 minutes apart. Uh, what if we do four trains? 20 minutes apart. 20 minutes apart might not be enough, but let's try 20 minutes apart. So, Train. Well, first of all, um, set interval twenty minutes apart, please. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll do it here. Uh, this is our centre point. We don't want trains blocking to us. So on the full bridge station, which is our first station, uh, where they turn around, uh, we'll set them to zero minutes, so they don't get stuck like we had them before. And the full bridge station halfway around, same. There we go. All right, so they got a 20-minute run. So we need four trains. So buy new trains. We'll buy the tram again. Hello, Polly. How are you doing? Uh, and we'll buy four of these. And this is a central area. I feel this is going to be more popular. It can be traveling people between north and south. So I'm going to build the maximum size train for this as well. So it costs us a lot of money. Hello. Random cats happen a lot, especially during live streams. <laughs> so uh, we will, we'll buy that. Uh, four trains should cover us. And uh, yeah, 47 million. Boom. Four trains, and we need to do the same thing. Pick on the central line. Pick for the central line. Pick for the central line. Pick for the central line. Now, there's probably a faster way of doing it. I haven't found one yet. Now, if we run that, the trains start up. We'll have to go. And they should get going, and then there should be a delay when the first train comes in. Get rid of that piece there. <clears throat> and then they should start the, their process. And this is what happens if you don't have a delay. This main station has no delay. But you see how all trains are too close to each other? And that would stay that forever. But because we've got a delay on this next station, they'll pull in there and they'll wait. And that's how it'll, it'll separate them out. So they'll count down, next train will move, count down. It might take them a few stations to sort of spread themselves out. But they'll do that. Let them run and we'll see how it works out for us. Do, 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 do. Might be, like I say, it might be a couple of stops before they get used to it. Okay. So if you go too fast on the, on the fast forward, it blanks the screen out and it's really hard to figure out what's happening. 
But here we go, the trains are uh, now at their appropriate stations and they are spread out quite nicely. And that works out fine. Now, if we look over here, where's my cursor? There it is. We have $13 in refund and $75 in, uh, in compensation. If we look down further, um, that's because a passenger got lost. We had to pay him a, we had to pay a passenger a refund and some compensation because they got lost. Now I don't know why they got lost. Oh, I do. Yes, because when I did this red line and I accidentally expanded the red line around the blue. Also, I want to make that a bit more vibrant red because I can't see it as easily. Oh no, it's just because it's slated. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> when I made the red line accidentally go around the blue area, the train couldn't get across, but the passenger still wanted to try, and because the passenger wanted to try. Well, they uh, they got all uppity about it, so uh, yeah. There's also 500 passengers in this station right now, which is actually good, but also not good. It's only 8 a.m. Um, and we see they're all going to Peterborough, Central people and Post Box, Post Office, BMX tracks, so they're going in quite a few different places. Where are the most people going? Be sort by count. Longfork down here. Yeah, so the uh, these tracks are definitely doing well. If we actually open up this train. <clears throat> you can see all the people are very happy because it's a free length line, but a price it down. It's good. Put it put the one. We put it two dollars a track. So let's do the same here. Put it to two dollars per ticket, and they can start paying for that uh, for that line they're running on. There we go. Put that train over here. So they're there. they're happy, but they're paying money now. They're not getting so happy because they have to pay money. And some of these people will be transferring between, so they might have paid for the first track. And you can see that here, actually here, this person. Has been on the train nine minutes and their total journey time is nine minutes. This person has been on the train two minutes, but their total journey time is 36 minutes. That means they spent 33 minutes ish on the previous train before they even got here. But that should make us some money, hopefully. And our trains are actually getting quite full, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Now, we'll keep an eye on what we do is look over here and you see um, compensation loss, there'll be compensation. Um, waited too long, there'll be refund price fare too high, so you keep it out for those. And when you do find those, you can go to lines and you can see under the counting tab that they have their own uh, information in them that tells you what's happening on individual tracks over that day. Alright, so we have the two lines running and they're making money right now, which is good for us because we are actually doing quite well as an early starting thing. Now we could be making more money, I can know that because we're not getting anybody complaining right now of. Uh, um, no one's complaining right now to us about um, prices too high. So we could definitely be uh, putting the price up a little bit, but I don't want to put it too far yet. I want to get this south section in first, and then we'll know if we're making too much or too little money. Because people who go from the very north here, who want to travel say, down to here, will then start complaining about the fact that they're paying a lot for the tickets. So we have to work that out, and it's about fine balancing that particular run. Now we do have, like, Basically three quarters of Peter recovered now. We've just got this part down the bottom where Yaxley is. Uh, and Hampton uh, Vales and stuff like that. We've got this area to, to do it next. And we should be able to get away with a station coming out of there. Then a station somewhere here, here. Bring a station curve around there. Down here. Might have to do two stations in this area. <clears throat> down there. Cut, cut Yaxley. Come up to Cadidia. Yeah, that should make a, a nice loop. But I feel we're out of time today. And we'll do that in the next video. Because um, I do want to do a few more. <clears throat> the goal is, by the end of maybe the next video, to have the, all of the actually up and running and tweak it and figure it out. And then look at doing another area. Maybe getting Corby. Corby's quite small, so maybe not Corby. Maybe Leicester. Um, we'll have a couple of towns running on their own little loops. Make sure they're all bearing themselves. Make sure they're all working fine. And then we'll look at linking them together. But we won't link them together until we're happy the individual towns are working well. Uh, as you can see here, if I turn off the, uh, there we go, on the height map, you can see the uh, population density map, sorry. You can see the trams moving around quite happily now. It's midday, we've not lost any passengers. Uh, there's a hundred and something people in there, so they're actually working quite well. But the trains are doing their job very nicely. And there we go. <clears throat> Alright, let me know what you think of the game, what you think of it it's so far. It's very, we're very early days in the game. We've just got a couple of tram lines down, we're moving passengers around Peterborough. Um, we're going to do some more down here, and then we need to look at another city, uh, and then we'll be looking at having a train between them. The trains are a bit more complicated because longer distances, pricing becomes a bit more complicated, and there are restrictions on certain things you can and can't do with train lines that you can do on trams. So I'm sure we'll figure that one out. 
But let me know what you think of the game so far, what you think of the, the basic of, of it. And if you have any idea about pricing, we can do. We are running our lines at $2 per um, track right now. And we're making... Let's have a look. It's costing us 13000 in running costs, so we've made 400000 in tickets. So I think we're doing okay, but we could probably squeeze a few bit, bits more out of there. I don't know what the actual limits will be, but, but we can play around with those later. Anyway, until next time, comments in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. The Cannibal Express to Leeds is departing in five minutes. The Cannibal Express is departing for Leeds in five minutes.